All right, so I wanted to talk to you about the three different types of muscles before we go into gross anatomy. So there are um, three major types of muscles, and uh, we'll go over all three of them. But I just want to give you a, a brief menu of, of what we're going to be going over. So um, the first type of, of muscle we'll go over will be smooth muscle. Um, this type of muscle, as you can guess, is um, or you probably already know, is, is involuntary and uh, non-striated. And we'll go over what exactly those mean, but um, this is normally the muscle that surrounds organs, most famously the respiratory tract or the GI tract. Um, which you just know by thinking about it that those are involuntary. So these go under the category of involuntary. So the next um, type of muscle is, is cardiac muscle. Now this is actually striated muscle and um, it is also non-voluntary. Which you can just think about um, your heart and how it works, and that you can't directly control your heart rate at any time. You might be able to be able to secondarily do it just by meditating or getting anxious, but not directly. So they consider that non-voluntary. I mean, these should be intuitive because you know smooth muscle. You know your GI tract. You can't um, voluntarily contract your GI tract, and um, so that that should just you know make intuitive sense. So the last one we'll talk about the most um, later will be, um, I call it skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle. And this is um, striated. And um, as you probably know, it's voluntary, right? These are the muscles, probably the most famous ones, uh, the ones that are uh, allow you to move your arm and your hands and your legs, allow you to run. That's all uh, skeletal muscle, and you can directly control those, so it shouldn't be a surprise that these are voluntary, right? If you want to make a fist, you can make a fist or open your hand. It's all, it's all voluntary. So I just say that just because I think these you shouldn't have to memorize these, right? These should make sense. The strided stuff we'll go over in a little bit, but um, it just refers to how it, really how it looks in histology, for one. That's why it's important for you, but also the function of it as um, striations is in reference to the sarcomeres sarcomeres inside of the cell itself. So let's dive more into uh, smooth muscle today and we'll get to these ones in other videos. Okay, so let's just dive in just into um, smooth muscle now. Let's just focus on smooth muscle. And as we said, this um, mostly surrounds uh, visceral, visceral organs. And visceral just means normally it has a means it has a lumen or kind of like a, a hole in the inside of it. And um, the most famous ones you're gonna encounter that um, it's gonna be extremely relevant to you are gonna be the smooth muscles surrounding vessels. And so when I say vessels, I'm, I'm talking about uh, blood vessels, uh, so arterioles or arteries or veins. I mean, these are gonna be really important because you're gonna learn about drugs and a bunch of other things that are gonna affect the receptors on these smooth muscle cells. They're gonna help contract or dilate. And uh, all day long, your, your body is contracting and dilating um, the smooth muscle cells around your vessels. And also another really important one you're gonna talk about a lot is gonna be uh, the lungs, the smooth muscle in the lungs. So bronchoconstriction and dilation. Um, these are going to be really important, uh, such also with dealing with medication as well. So another area too that's also famous for having um, smooth muscle is the is the GI tract. Now there are a lot of other places as well that have smooth muscle. These are the main ones um, that we'll talk about a lot, or you'll talk a lot of, about a lot in your first year of medical school. But also um, there's a ton of other places in the body that have smooth muscle. Now, most of the smooth muscle you encounter, especially in the GI tract, has uh, two layers. It has um, a longitudinal layer and a circular layer. So longitudinal and uh, a circular layer. Now we'll look at a, a, 
uh, layer, um, we'll look, sorry, we'll look at a histology slide and it'll show a longitudinal and circular side by side, which is normally how you see it in a cross section. And you can see the cells going in both directions, which is kind of cool. And we'll go over that as well. Another important part about um, smooth muscles is that they're mostly regulated by um, the, auto the autonomic nervous system. Nervous system, um, and that includes both a uh, sympathetic, which I always abbreviate, sympathetic nervous system, and the parasympathetic nervous system. So both of those will innervate a uh, smooth muscle, and you'll go over the receptors and the and um, the neurotransmitters associated with that. And we'll probably, actually we'll probably do a video on that later as well. So um, it, the cool thing about um, smooth muscle and it's uh, a definitely a main feature is that they have um, they have gap junctions and this is this is cool because it allows like the environment between each smooth muscle cell to communicate with each other so if you have a bunch of them lined up a bunch of smooth muscle cells this is a horrible picture of them but this is just um, just give you a, a visual but they'll be connected by these gap junctions and um, they can actually like talk to each other, so they're all contract together. And this is actually called um, this actually has a term. It's called a single unit. Single unit. And um, so when this one contracts, it gets innervation, and when that contracts, it'll contract all the cells down. And normally this uh, results in a muscle movement called a peristalsis. It's actually important that you understand this movement as it's uh, super important in the human body and we'll go over it a little bit more later. So also these these uh, cells can also be um, not move in a single unit and uh, they can actually move in a multi-unit, they call it, multi-unit. And these are like just really individual cells just like a skeletal muscle that aren't connected. And so they can actually get individual um, innervation so this is good in a sense because you can actually um, you have more precise movement um, on each individual cell and you can actually can have better control um, over each cell's contractility so um, sorry about the right control here um, so as opposed to this where it's kind of like a domino set where you just hit the first domino and then all the rest of them go down um, but you don't really have control over the ones downstream. They're all connected to the first one. So whatever signal you get this one, they're all pretty much going to get downstream. You can't control each individual single uh, signal very well. As opposed to multi-unit where you can actually have um, innervation of each single cell. So you can actually have better um, control over each way how it contracts. So it's more, it's much more specific. So that's, that's that. So now we will talk about, um, well, a good example of where this is too, like um, you have multi-unit in the, in the iris. Peristalsis is in, in um, the GI tract, it's in veins, it's in a ton of places. Um, so that, those are those two. Now what I wanna do now is we'll go a little bit into cell structure and histology, and histology of smooth muscle. Okay, so I actually wanted to go over with you what exactly what a smooth muscle cell looks like. And we'll also look at a uh, histology cross section here in a second as well. And it's important to know that what uh, the difference is uh, in the looks of smooth muscle cells and skeletal cells and cardiac cells, because you be asked to identify them a lot. And we'll go over those major differences right now. So this is uh, the outline of a smooth muscle cell. It's normally like this fusiform um, kind of shape as they call it and it kind of tapers off on both ends and this will be a longitudinal cross section of it and that's the the interesting thing about um, smooth muscle is it normally comes in two layers when you cross section it has that uh, like we said that cross sectional layer and this uh, longitudinal layer so you actually have like a longitudinal layer and then normally a cross section with it and in cross section it won't look like this right it'll look um, it won't look like this, it'll look, the nucleus won't be as long, and the cell won't be long, it'll be more like a circle, because you're looking at it straight on. And we'll go over that in uh, just a second here. And one of the major features of a smooth muscle cell is a single um, kind of elongated nucleus right in the middle of the cell. And this is different than cardiac and uh, smooth, and car cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle, because skeletal muscle normally has their nucleuses 
peripherally and more than one in a cell. So this is an important distinction of a smooth muscle cell. So there you go, it's our nucleus right there. And just remember in cross-section, this won't be long, it'll be like a normal circle. Um, also running throughout these cells, you have these um, intermediate filaments that kind of just run as opposed to each other like that. And they connect to the cell membrane and uh, they connect with these anchoring uh, proteins. And uh, we'll talk about those in a second. They're called dense bodies and they connect to each other and the membrane and the cytoplasm and everything. So when this thing contracts, it's connected by these dense bodies and everything's contracting together. As you can imagine, these have these connections in order to bring this whole cell together when it contracts. So let's represent these dense bodies. Now there are, there are a lot of them on the membrane, but they're also inside the cell connecting to the cytoplasm. I put them as white here. And this is a, the general kind of description of um, a smooth muscle cell, general diagram. Notice that there's, there's no striations here at all, so you don't have those sarcomeres lined up, um, like very um, organized like a skeletal muscle or cardiac muscle. So we'll go ahead and go into histology now. I just want you to remember that these uh, characteristics of a smooth muscle cell before we go look at a picture. Okay, so I wanted to go over this uh, sweet histology slide here of uh, smooth muscle. And um, you'll notice uh, everything I said came true. I wasn't lying. We have uh, the outer um, longitudinal muscle and our inner um, circular muscle. So let me actually write on here. So this is um, this is our yeah longitudinal muscle and inner circular muscle. So we have two layers, and um, you can actually see uh, the cell nucleus is here. Uh, um, even though this is a circular layer, these cells are cut longitudinally. So that's an important distinction. So this is actually a cross section of a of a smooth muscle cell, but these are longitudinal uh, sections of a smooth muscle cell right there. So that's actually just the nucleus. And it, it looks just like the diagram from the side here. So you have this nucleus right here, single center nucleus. And then uh, and the cell kind of goes right here and it has a little point on the end and it comes back, has a little point. Now these are all connected uh, to each other with, with gap junctions, like we said earlier. So um, you know they can all talk to each other. And the cool part about this slide is, we'll talk about it in a second, but Here's another, uh, these are all cross-sectional of nucleuses, and these are all connected to each other by gap junctions as well. So th these are both smooth muscle, even though they look entirely different, just, just by the way they are sectioned. But these show nice uh, kind of elongated nucleuses in the, in the fusiform bodies like that. Now this is in the GI tract, and the cool part about this slide in particular is, is this right here. Um, this is called the myenteric plexus. My enteric plexus. And this makes sense since we were talking about smooth muscle and how it's controlled by um, the autonomic nervous system. That right in between these two layers, we have the autonomic nervous system. These are neurons, uh, postganglionic uh, neurons of the autonomic nervous system. So when these, um, these control these muscles and the contraction of these muscles, it makes sense because it's right in between those two. And um, this is also called Auerbach's plexus or Auerbach's plexus. Um, but that's the, the cool thing about this slide. So you have longitudinal section, smooth muscle, and cross-sectioned smooth muscle. And one thing I haven't uh, talked about was um, one uh, high-yield uh, clinical question that's always brought up is, is um, newborn babies sometimes are born without their um, enteric nervous system reaching their um, the distal end of their colon. And so without that um, nervous system contracting these muscles, it loses all that contractility and that peristalsis to move food down the GI tract. So these muscles aren't, aren't contracting. And it's called a Hirschsprung's disease, Hirschsprung's with an H. And um, it's genetic, so it happens young. And they normally have to remove the part of the colon that is affected by it. So food can keep passing through, the peristalsis will keep moving because the peristalsis is moving normally in the upper part of the GI system, but once it gets to the distal colon or the end of the GI system where there's no peristalsis, the food just stops, as you can imagine, because all this is for moving food. And um, so you get extremely constipated and it's something that needs to be taken care of, but it just shows how important peristalsis is to our everyday living. 
So I just wanted to include that in there because everyone always talks about that disease.